Hey guys, my name is Will Charter. Uh, welcome to my channel. This is my first YouTube video that I'm creating and uh, like the title suggests, my objective here is to show everyone how I went from a 487, which was the 12th percentile on the MCAT, to a 507, uh, which is the 70th percentile on the MCAT, especially as a non-traditional. Uh, so let's get into it and I uh, hope you guys like it. First off, um, this video could be uh, used for anyone, um, anyone that's in uh, academia, uh, a, a, a teachers or students, um, or even parents, really, anyone that's interested in learning, I feel like this video could help you, um, hence the reason why I felt the need to create it. Um, and so I'll delve into some of the, the tools and the methods that I used um, that really helped change the way that I study um, and will be studying from now on. So. Just to give you guys a bit of background, um, I actually got my undergraduate degree in biomedical science uh, from uh, Federation University Australia in Ballarat, shout out Ballarat, um, and that I graduated back in 2014. So uh, I ended up taking the MCAT uh, this year earlier in July, so um, it's been about five and a half years since I've used any of my um, any of the things that I learned during my undergrad. Um, <clears throat> in between those two periods, I had various sales jobs um, that were completely unrelated to the field of science, really. And so, um, I, although I did have a, 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 I worked for a medical device company last year, um, so I suppose that was related to science, but besides the point, um, I really never used anything that I learned in, uh, in undergrad. In that time period so I pretty much had to go and start from scratch and teach myself um, the basic sciences um, chemistry organic chemistry all that fun stuff so um, really uh, when we first started studying and I say we um, my wife and I both uh, took the MCAT together and uh, we started in January and so uh, we started studying and uh, we're about a month into it and we decided to take what's known as a diagnostic exam. Um, really, it's just a, a, you know, a practice exam that you take just to see where you're at um, and that way you can see how far you've come along. So we took that exam and uh, I scored on a 487, which is the 12th percentile as stated. And, um, you know, especially after being, st after studying for a month or so, um, you know, felt like I was kind of getting back into my groove. It was quite disappointing to see that. And so, um, you know, but I, I just kind of sat there and, and convinced myself that, you know, being a non-traditional student, being five years out of school, um, I needed to put, put in more time than, than most people and really get cracking. So continued studying for a little bit. And, um, you know, to be honest, it was pretty similar to how I'd prepared for previous exams that I'd taken. So back when I was in undergrad um, and also back when I was trying to get into medical school in Australia, um, we had to sit the GAMSAT. And uh, <laughs> just to give you guys an idea, I did terribly um, when I sat the GAMSAT. I sat it multiple times. Um, I think it was all up four times. Um, and, you know, wasn't even breaking uh, the 50th percentile uh, on, on those exams. So I didn't really see any significant improvement for a while. And just to give you an idea of what exactly I was doing, I was just doing what I would say most people do to study, and that is read something, um, make notes, make nice, beautiful notes, and uh, pretty much just write out verbatim what you've just read. And... Uh, I, I found out that that's the, pretty much the the least efficient way that anyone can study anything. I don't care what the subject is. So um, things changed when I actually stumbled across a video on uh, Reddit. Actually, I was um, I was perusing some of the uh, threads, uh, the MCAT threads on Reddit, and it was just an ad, I believe. And um, this guy started talking about how to learn and active recall. And I had never heard of that before. Um, and so I watched the video and he was talking about how um, the most 
efficient way to learn was use, utilizing what's called active recall and spaced repetition. And so I started taking some notes on that and um, I then started implementing active recall and spaced repetition. And just to give you guys a brief idea, what that is, is active recall is you read something and instead of just taking notes verbatim of, of exactly what you've just read, pretty much close the book um, and then put that in your own words. So you'll ask yourself, well, what did I just read? And so you're really kind of testing yourself right there and then. And it, it does take longer, but it's much more efficient. Um, and so you test yourself and it's okay if you don't know how to do it um, or, or, if you, or if you really can't recall exactly what you just read. But the point is you're, you're sitting there and you're saying, all right, let's synthesize that. Let's put that into my own words and see if I can explain what I just read. And, um, you know, I even took that a step further and actually when I read something, I, I noted down little questions for myself about that particular passage. So then later on when I was studying, I would go through and look at those questions that I had written out and I would answer those questions. And so what that does over time is it starts to build these neural, neural connections in your brain. Um, and that's, you know how you'll strengthen those pathways and, and therefore retain that information. So it's a much more active type of learning rather than a very passive type of learning, which is reading or highlighting um, and reading something and then taking notes ex verbatim exactly what you've just read. Um, as I said, that's just a, a complete waste of time. And so then spaced repetition uh, is pretty much mitigating the forgetting curve. So there is, as I'm sure, you guys are probably familiar, you read something and over time uh, that information fades, especially if you don't utilize it. And so um, really when you look at spaced repetition, what you're doing is you're reviewing that, that content uh, over time and um, you're, you're not letting, you're interrupting the forgetting curve, not letting that take its path. Um, and so eventually when you have this forgetting curve that's plummeting down, you're interrupting it each time you revisit it. So it, it does, it will continue to plummet, um, but uh, each time you revisit that particular topic, you're really putting in concrete in your brain uh, that information. So that was really, really useful for me. And uh, the thread that I was looking on, a lot of people were recommending utilizing question banks as well. Um, and again, that's just touching on the fact that it's when it comes to learning, you've really got to be active about it um, instead of just passive and thinking that you can just sit there and read things and it will stick because it just won't. Um, it does It does take time and it does take effort and you do feel more exhausted, um, when you, especially when you're doing something like active recall because you're really challenging yourself, but it, it really pays off. Um, and uh, the question banks are, I guess, very similar in the sense where, um, you know, you've got these questions that that are based around the topics that you've just read and what better way to prepare for a, a, an exam um, than doing practice questions. So I used UWorld um, and I found that incredibly helpful. Um, and so that's just one form of like question packs or question banks that you can utilize to really get yourself going and, and make some significant improvements. The, the last technique that I used was uh, actually introduced to me by my older brother um, and uh, it's called a memory palace and this was incredibly helpful uh, for me because you know particularly for the MCAT there are just things that you just need to remember there's no two ways about it like the amino acids it's just you have to memorize them you have to memorize the the different names for the you know the, the three letter um, representations of them, the one letter representations, and uh, you have to know which ones are polar, which ones are non-polar, which ones are basic and acidic, and um, even the structure. Um, and if you don't know that information, then you, you you it's hard to do extremely well. And by no means do I think that a 507 is extremely well, but it is for my standards, and uh, I, I'm, I'm overall, I'm pretty happy with myself. But the memory palace is, um, it's a type of mnemonic, and what it is, is it's utilizing uh, spatial memory rather than semantic memory. And so um, just to, to give a brief description, you picture like a palace or a house and uh, you, you go into each room in your, in your brain and uh, you, you pick five different 
uh, they're called loci in those rooms and you encode information into those locations in the room. So say for example you walk into your bedroom and you see your chest of drawers, you see a bookshelf, you see your bed, you see a television, you see a side desk, um, or you see a closet. Those are all things that you can use as, as loci, locations, and uh, you would encode information into that. So you make little stories for yourself. So um, just to give you an example, one of the things that I uh, memorized through the amino acids was tyrosine. Um, I, I, I grouped them by rooms to find out, figure out which ones are non-polar and polar. Um, and tyrosine to me sounded like a tire. And uh, it was the, the place that it happened to be in the room was the window. And to make this connection in my brain, uh, I imagined a car smashing into the house and a tire rolling through the window. Um, and so that to me was my mental trigger, um, that that window represented a tire. Um, so that was incredibly efficient for me because your spatial memory is so much more uh, expansive than your semantic memory. Sometimes we feel like our semantic memory, which is words and abstract ideas, can get a little bit full, um, but our spatial memory is, it, it's, it's almost, it, it never ends. Um, and, you know, when we associate things with, with especially real places in our lives, uh, we can visualize those things and we have these little funny stories that stick out and, uh, and that really, really helped me. Um, I even uh, memorized the Fischer esterification uh, chemical reaction through utilizing this memory palace and uh, that was something that really stumped me. Um, it's not a high yield topic but it was something that I knew if I got a question on um, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't even have a clue so I decided to encode that, encode that whole um, uh, chemical reaction in a memory palace and uh, so that really was a benefit to me. I can do a separate video on that if you'd like um, or really on, on any of the other things but just to recap active recall, spaced repetition, and the memory palaces that I utilize that really helped me go from a 487 to a 507 on the MCAT. Uh, so I hope this video helps, guys. Um, like I said, I just wanted to get that information out, um, and anyone that finds it useful, um, great. I, I hope that you guys can, can take this information and apply it to anything that you're studying, because you can. Those These techniques can be used for anything. Um, and everything really so uh, if it helps give it a like appreciate it and uh, thanks guys let me know if you want me to do any other videos uh, looking forward to it cheers